I'm Dan Galusha and welcome to another edition of Shoot and Plank. Today we're going to be doing Lever Action Rifles 101 by using some Henry's. Um, and when I'm talking about 101, we're going to be talking about safety with the lever action, some of how you actually use the gun, and also some of the sights that you're going to be seeing and how you sight with them. Uh, we've done some of this off and on with different things through the time, and I've got a couple of Henry's here with me. Now you guys that have got lever actions, have shot them forever, you're not going to want this video because like I said it's 101. This is for people that have probably never picked up a lever action or um, well they just are getting started and that's all I can say. And what I've done is I've picked two of, well they're all my favorites, but I've picked a couple of my favorites that are ones that uh, people seem to tend to start with, or at least seems like it. One is, in fact I'll get it out right now, one is the Frontier. And this one's the one that we're going to go through all the safety stuff and that with. The other one is a Golden Boy, which most everybody knows what a Golden Boy is. And you're going to be seeing it in a little bit, and it's a special one, and I'll explain that. But first off, this is a Frontier. Now I happen to call this one Tiger because it has Tiger stripes back here. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's a beautiful stock. Anyway, what I've got on here is a Skinner rail mount peep sight, which is another thing we're going to be talking about in just a little bit, but not right now. The moment we're going to talk about the safety of this gun. First off, just like any gun, you keep your finger out of the trigger guard unless you actually got it pointed at a target and you're planning on shooting it. The next thing is you always point it in a safe direction. Don't be flashing people. Uh, even like your cameraman, if he's back there, you really don't want to pointed to him either but um, how do you know it's empty you don't you always treat a gun no matter pistol rifle whatever as if there's ammunition in it now here's the thing with a lever action that's nice say you hand it to somebody you've been shooting or whatever or you hand it to them period open it up all the way that is now open it cannot be fired and you can even look down inside and see if there's another round coming up, which of course there isn't because it's empty. And also you can make it even safer. You can take the tube out of the magazine and you can see there's nothing in there. It's not coming out. So that's one way you can make it safe too. If you want it completely, like if you're cleaning the weapon and that, take the tube out, the hole works, open it up. Of course you're going to open it up anyway because of cleaning it. But that's one way to make it safe. And like I said, you lay it down, the next person picks it up, he loads it, or if it's still loaded, which it could be, but you got this open so it's not going to fire, then he can go ahead and close it. Then back here, your hammer. And of course, these are 22, so you never pull the trigger on a 22. But you hold this down like this, pull the trigger, and ease it up slowly. Now, it's in that position. It's out of the full cock, but here's another safety measure. Half cock, you will see here. Here it clicks, see the trigger move? That is half cock. Now, you've always heard of going off half cock. Well, it really won't. You can pull that trigger as you can see. It's not going to fire. It also avoid anything like a drop, like has happened with guns, as you know, you've heard of that a lot, a gun hitting the floor and it goes off or something of that sort. Well, this will avoid that as well. So that's a couple of safety measures that you want to have on it. And I may think of some more as we go along here. I'm going to put it back here and put it full down because pretty soon we're going to load this and I'm going to show you that too. And then we're going to shoot in a bit. We're going to talk about sights. Now, this is one I'm going to get out the other one. There's two basic sights that come on them. Either a peep sight, like you've just seen here, or a buckhorn type sight. Put iron sights in there. There's a buckhorn sight. Now, what I'm going to show you, and I'm going to get around there so you can see it. That other one's got a brass bead too, and we'll be talking about that. But right here, 
there's a little white diamond. I don't know if you can see that or not. I want to get, I'll tell you, getting it just in line with the camera. There we go. There's a white diamond there. Now up front here, there's a brass bead. You take that brass bead and you put it right on top of that little white diamond. Now some people don't like those white diamonds. It can be solved easy enough. Just take that little screw out of there, flip this plate around, and as you can see from this side, I believe, right here, it would be a black one. So you do away with that white diamond. Me, especially since I'm talking to you that are not used to these or anything, I would keep that white diamond on her. That white diamond, I have had a lot of people that have never shot these. That once they use that, they say, man, you don't want to go back. Because that gives you a precise spot where you want to put that bead right on top. And if you're sighting this in, which is another thing, this can be adjusted for windage and elevation. Elevation is done by this little gadget right here. Again, we'll get around there. This little gadget right here moves down into here. You lift this up, move it down if you want it to come up. And that is also if you want your point of impact to come up. The windage part, well, you got to loosen this screw right here and then tap it over just a little bit and use baby taps. But again, now I'm getting out of 101. I'm getting into something more detailed. Because in most cases, when you get these, I'll say most cases, I won't say all, it will be pretty much on. The factory will have it adjusted pretty doggone good. Um, now, this, we were talking about the peep sights. There's a couple of different types of pizza, peep sights. This one has got a rail, this Frontier. So I decided to go with the rail mount. I can mount it myself, easy enough. Uh, I use the OEM little brass bead. You don't have to because you might have to change as far as elevation, the size of your post, the tallness of it. Well, this one, I got this screwed all the way down, and that's how you do elevation. You unscrew it to bring it up, screw it down, and go down. And I brought it all the way down. That's where I've got it on this one. And like I said, again, we're going to be shooting this in a little bit. The other type of a peep sight, and these are all Skinner. In fact, if you buy there's not too many Henry's that have got peep sights already on them, but if you buy one, it's going to be a Skinner. And the reason being is Skinner is actually, to me, I mean, others might argue with me, but to me, Skinner's the best. That's all there is to it. They're out of Montana. They're made in the USA, just like the other Skinner products. They've even got optics. But again, that's getting out of 101. But up here, you can see on this Golden Boy, there's a flat area up here. That's where your peep's going to be mounted, but that has to be drilled and tapped. So what you can do is you can either take it to a gunsmith, have them mount it, or you can take the receiver cover off, send it to Skinner in Montana, and of course those people are going to know exactly where it should be mounted, and they will do all the mounting for you. It comes back, it's on there, it's ready to go. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we're going to load these. I'm going to show you how to load one. And uh, then we're going to shoot a little bit. I've got to set up some targets. I'm just going to set up some planking targets. Because we're not going to do much shooting. What I'd like to do, and I have not been able to do it, is to actually show you how it looks down the sight. Can't get it around the camera right. I tried it. Don't work. Anyway, now, loading these. There's a couple of ways that you can load this. Well, actually, there's three ways that you want to get right down to it. One is with a speed loader, where you take this tube out, and it has a thing where you just dump them like this and phew, all, they all go in at one time. There's a couple of those different types, but that's something else. Now, you can load them one at a time by taking this completely out and dropping them right down the front. Or, you can do it this way, and I'll show you. You bring up your, here's your follower right here. You can see that bright orange follower in there. Okay, you bring that up there. Now, I'll get some ammunition here. You can see I've been shooting some because this is gone. Again, this is CCI 
It's CCI uh, quiet, in fact, which is a 710 velocity. And we've got uh, eight rounds here, so let's put in eight rounds. I'll show you now. Like I said, this is a way to do it where you keep your tube in. And what I do is I'll take each round. You take it and you want to make sure it goes butt first. There's a little slot right here. And I'll show you this. I'll show you this up close so that you can see. Okay, here's this little slot right here. And uh, juggling this is something. I will take the round of ammo. And that little slot right there that you see. You know, I think you can see it. No, you can't. You don't know, have you in there. There you are. Okay. That little slot right here. Right up there. Okay, you take this. See that little, little dinky there? Just a little indentation. Put that part right through there and drop it in. That's what you do with every one of them. That's to leave this in. If you don't want to leave that in, you take it out. And you can just take the gun like this and I'll bring it back here you can see right here there's the opening you just drop them straight in that way so you can do it either way but just remember the bullet goes forward don't be loading them backwards that wouldn't be very successful shooting I'll guarantee you that so those are all loaded and we got eight rounds in there and now you definitely want to keep her safe because you do know it's loaded now we put this back in and i'll show you right here you'll notice there's a lot more spring to it but you bring it around here and there's this little notch right here okay there's a little thing right here on it right there and get it up here there it is right there okay you turn that so it goes down through that groove Right there, it goes into there, and then you lock it into place. You could hear that snap. So that's locked into place and ready to go. Now, we've got eight rounds loaded in here. So now, what I'll do is I'll load up this one. Oh, and I told you, this is when I'll tell you about this, I guess. This is a special Golden Boy. And this you can have done too, Tony. But again, this isn't part of 101. This one is engraved. You probably can't read it or anything. But the reason this is engraved is because when my mom was 95 years old, my birthday was coming up. And she knew I'd been looking at a golden boy. I never got one. I got the others. And that one, by the way, that Frontier is my first. First Henry. And she says, how could I get that before you? Because she knew she couldn't go out and do anything. And I told her through Henry, because as you know, I am you do T&E for Henry. And so that says, from Mom to Dan, she gives my name, on his 65th birthday, and gives the date. So that's a special one, and it's also engraved all over here, too. And uh, that was my last birthday present for my mom. So... That one's a favorite in more than one way. Not just because it's a golden boy and it shoots good, but also it came from mom. So anyhow, that was just a sidebar to this. And we're gonna shoot, I'm gonna load that one up. I'm gonna set up some plinking bottles. And I'll probably set up something else because I've got eight rounds in here and I'll put a few more in here too. So uh, I'll be right back. All right, I got them all loaded. And you can see the targets I got up there. I'm gonna be shooting right here beside you. We're shooting at probably about 15 yards. I mean, I'm not caring that much about it. I'm just trying to go through, we'll put them around in. And uh, this is going to be the Frontier first, which has got that rail mount peep sight. Now, something I want to tell you about is when you're focusing on your sight, you're not focusing on that rear peep. You're actually, your eye, like Andy Larson, who owns Skinner, says your eye automatically goes through that peep you're focusing on that thing that's up in front whether it's a your post your your bead your fiber optic whatever you've got up there that's what you're focusing on and you're putting that right in the middle of that 
uh, feet is what you're doing. And then you hit it. You hope, anyway. And with that, I'm aiming right for the middle of those. Now, that was five of them right there. We still got three more rounds, so we've got an eight inch gong here, and I'm gonna go right for the middle of that. And I'm putting that peep right in the middle of it. Okay, and this is something else that I want to tell you too, is don't, in fact, I'm gonna zoom you back out so I can show you what I do. Okay. I want to do this stuff while I'm thinking of it. Now I'm in a safe direction here. I know because cedar oaks, I've got a wooded area here. There's hills in front of me, the whole thing. It also is not, don't have any rounds. That was an empty casing from that last round shot. So what you do is when you're firing these, any of them, you concentrate on keeping it up here, just like this, so that when you shoot, you shoot, go to your next one, shoot, go to your next one, shoot, keep it on your shoulder, don't do this. You shoot, you go like this, you shoot, bring it back, you shoot, bring it back, that throws you out of whack. Now, yes, there are times that you will do that. I'm not going to say there aren't. But if you have got consistent deal air of targets like I had, you're going to hold it up just like that. So now we're going to get the golden boy, and we're going to do the same thing with that. So let me set those targets back up. This time, we're not going to zoom in. You know what's up there anyway. What I'm going to do is so that you know what I was talking about, about shooting, is how I'm doing this. So, uh, we'll get around in. We'll keep it right there. Oh, and by the way, all of those hit right in the middle with that peep. They're real close to the middle up there on the, the gong, too. They group very well. That's the final one. Now you've seen the way that I kept it up there and kept shooting. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get that gong. That was a freshly painted gong. So we'll know where all those rounds hit. I grabbed one of the bottles too, and you can see right there that they both, both of the guns hit right in the same area. I've got them sighted in pretty much alike. And now, like I said, it's freshly painted. You can see all of the rounds hit right in the middle area. Uh, let's see, these, these three right here were the peep sight, and these right here were the five rounds out of the Golden Boy. I was kind of varying it, but you can see how closely those are actually sighted in. And they're got tuned in. I've <laughs> got Pepper down here licking me on the leg. He's probably wanting some more water. So warm it's 90 it's in the low 90s anyway so but here at Cedar Oaks I love it it's to me it's not that bad of course I like heat anyway I I'm just one of those people anyway that's that's not part of course 101 on what I've been talking about but just thought I'd throw that in uh, but again this was the golden boy the Henry golden boy that we used and also the Henry Frontier Probably, you know, here a while back, I presented a Frontier rigged out just like this. In fact, I've presented it to the Rogalis, 
the kids didn't even know they weren't shooting mine because they'd shot mine in the past. And to me, this is probably one of the best rifles, one of the best Henry rifles that you can start out anybody. Yes, they have the classic. And I know they've always said that that's the starter, but to me, it's this one right here. Because you've got your brass bead up here in the front. This is where your sight normally is, like I showed you on the other one, the buckhorn. But all this is removed and out because I've got this. And if you want to get it, and it's got the rail, so you can put whatever other, let's say you want an optic on there or something like that, you can do that because it does have a regular rimfire rail. But instead, I wanted a Skinner Peep sight, and they've got the rail mounts. I put that on, and we got a video, too, to show you how to do that. So if you're interested in doing that, you might want to check back on those. Just subscribe. I think it's right down over here. There's a little button over there. It's got a picture of me and Pepper. And uh, Pepper and I, we both invite you to subscribe to Shoot and Plank. Also, if you want, you can go over and subscribe to Dan's Fishing Tales, because that's the other side of what we do. But anyway, that is lever action safety and how to shoot 101 using Henry rifles. So until next time, shoot safe and have a great day of planking.